Today on Ham Radio for Non-Techies, we're going to do a DIY project as part of our new DIY series. This time we're making an antenna window pass-through that you can make easily, you can customize it and make it as simple or as complex as you want. That's right here, right now on Ham Radio for Non-Techies. Well, welcome back, guys. My name is Scott. My call sign is KI5MPL. If you're new here, we teach uh, people that are interested in ham radio how to get into the hobby. And for those of you who are in the hobby and may not have any resources out there, I try to explain as much as I can, uh, or at least to simplify uh, the parts of this hobby and make it so you can get into it easily and find all the resources you need. We do have a website. It's hamradiofornontechies.com. So you know, you're welcome to go check that out. And it's full of all kinds of information to help you get into the hobby and understand what it is you're getting into. Today, however, we are doing a DIY. And the DIY we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna build a window pass through. I've reached the point now where I've gotta have one of these things. I looked online, the stuff that I'm seeing is like a hundred bucks, 200 bucks. I'm, I'm not gonna deal with that. I had the, the tools and the skills here to make these things. And it was actually a lot easier to build than you might expect. So let's hop on over to my desktop and start the presentation. All right. So for this antenna uh, feed through panel, you're going to need a couple items. The tools you're going to need is going to be a chop saw or miter saw with a decent carbide blade on it. Uh, preferably a drill press, unless you really trust yourself to hold the drill perfectly straight up and down. And you'll see why when we get into this, uh, a step bit, a step bit's kind of like a conical shaped drill bit that has different levels on it. Each level gets a little bit wider and we need that to get through. Well, you'll see, uh, you'll need some regular drill bits, probably some screwdrivers and wrenches or ratchet wrench set with some sockets. So what you're seeing here on the right side here is basically what we're going to be building. And this one that I, I chose to do, it has a ground place here and SO239 connectors here. Now you can make this, like I said, you can make this as simple or as difficult as you want. I only had a need for two. I need one for a dedicated for my VHF UHF antenna. And I wanted one for HF. And since I don't have an antenna farm growing in my backyard, I tend to just put up one antenna at a time and I move things around in my yard based on what I'm trying to do. So I only had a need for two of these. You're welcome to make this thing as wide as you want, add as many connectors as you want, make it as complex and crazy as you want. It's entirely up to you. The skills and the, and the techniques I'm gonna show you here are completely transferable to anything you wanna create. Moving on. So supplies for the build. Again, I only needed two, uh, two antenna connectors, so I picked up two uh, three-inch SO239 connectors. By the way, all the uh, stuff we're talking about here will be linked down below. Some is purchased on Amazon. The majority of it you'll get at Lowe's or Home Depot. Anywho, depending on how many antennas you want to connect, you'll need the proper amount of SO239 connectors and you will need three inch. I thought they're gonna be a little long, but it actually came out perfect in the end. So three inches is the way to go. Uh, you'll also need one piece of a one by four by eight foot PVC board. I picked it up at Lowe's, it was like 20 bucks and it was actually almost cheaper uh, it was actually almost cheaper than um, than uh, getting it. Uh, sorry about that. Let me get this off of here. People are calling me for no reason. Um, it was actually cheaper than using wood. And the advantages to it are that uh, it will not rot. So rot proof, relatively cheap, easy to work with, easy to cut. It was a perfect, uh, perfect thing. The next is a piece of aluminum strip. I picked up a two inch by, by three foot, so two inch by 36 inch by eighth of an inch thick. Uh, it's a perfect size to get everything mounted on there, nice and sturdy, easy to cut. So, and I think it was about 10, 12 bucks for that. Uh, and of course, like I said before, you'll need a step drill bit. The other remaining hardware you're gonna need is a uh, piece of 10 by 1024 all thread. You can get a big piece of that, usually about 36 inches, I don't know, three, $4. Uh, you'll need some 10 by 24 uh, machine screws that are two and a half inch, or if you can find two and a quarter, two and a quarter might be a little bit better. Uh, you'll need six 10 24 nuts. You'll need six number 10 washers, six number 10 lock washers. 
some self-adhesive window foam sealer. And I got stuff that's about one inch wide and expands out to one inch. And you'll see that at the end of the video. And I got four one and a quarter inch stainless steel wood screws to, to kind of uh, fasten everything all together. With that being done, let's get started with the build here. So number one is determine how many antennas you want to be able to connect this thing. As I said before, that's going to determine how wide a lot of your pieces are going to be. You want to measure your window width. So find the window you're going to be putting this in and measure the window width as far as you can from the inside of both sides of the window and make that measurement and uh, make that your measurement. So when you cut your PVC, you want to add just a little bit to that. You want to be able to take away PVC board if it's too wide. And we, I want it too wide on purpose. You can slowly inch your way into it and sneak up on the cut. So measure your window width and then determine the width of the aluminum strip to cut for your pass through. You will need two identical pieces of the PVC board and two identical pieces of the uh, aluminum strip. So if you're going to be doing a much wider panel, you might need to go get two aluminum strips and cut them down so you have enough, enough space to put all your SO239 connectors, whatever else you plan on doing with this. So step number one, using your chop saw, you're going to cut the PVC board. Again, like I said, you need two pieces of this because we're going to sandwich them together to make an inch and a half thick uh, panel. And then we'll put the aluminum pieces on the outside and inside of both of those and mount everything else. Step two, like I said, you'll cut your aluminum strips for your panel and you need two identical pieces for your panel. Um, I was sketchy about using my really nice Diablo blade on this, but then I did some research and the carbide tips on this thing are so hard and aluminum is so soft. We're only going through an eighth of an inch. It did not cause any problems for me whatsoever to cut this, these two pieces into the strips that I needed. So I got those things cut easy peasy. Number three, find your centers and tape your boards together. So you get your PVC board. You got two identical pieces, get them matched up as much as easily as you can. And I want you to tape them, tape around them, just get them so they don't, where they don't come apart. You want those things stuck together as much as possible for a later step. Uh, we're going to now determine where your connectors and grounding and mounting holes will go on the aluminum. So what I did is I grabbed some painter's tape, as you see here in the video, and I, I marked out where I wanted my holes for everything, and I started drilling. Now, an SO239 connector is exactly 5 eighths of an inch. Actually, it's a little bit smaller than 5 eighths of an inch. So you can see here in the picture, that's the step bit that I was using. I had it taped off at 5 eighths of an inch. So I started off with the aluminum pieces. I marked my two places where I want my SO239 connectors to go, and I slowly brought that thing down. And once you get that initial hole in there, the rest of it just kind of, uh, kind of uh, drills right through, no problem. You want to make sure you stop at the 5 eighths on the one side. When that's done, flip the piece over, take the 5 eighths bit, or take that step bit again and go back on the other side. You're going to have little shavings and blowout from the from it coming through the first way. You want to bring that back around and just kind of just kind of kiss it a little bit with the bit to kind of clean it up. Any remaining bits or fragments or little splinters or anything that are on that, hit it with some sandpaper, knock it off a little, you know, a little razor blade, whatever. It's really, really soft metal. So it'd be very easy to take care of and deal with. So get those pieces done, get all those holes cut, get all get your over here. You see, I've got the holes, my my mounting holes, which will mount onto the uh, PVC board. This hole here and this hole here are going to be for the SO239s. And I believe I have another, oh yeah, right here is another hole that I was doing, I was uh, setting up, or maybe it was back that way. I have to look in a minute uh, for the grounding. So get all those holes drilled, be done with it. Then you have two identical plates that are ready to go. So let's move on to the next section. So now step five, place one of those aluminum panels exactly where you want it on the PVC board. So that's what, what I did here is I measured out the exact center of the board this way and the exact center of the board lengthwise. And I just kind of eyeballed the piece and stuck it on there and I taped it down. So tape down the, the aluminum strip to the PVC board. Your PVC boards are taped together. Everything's nice and secure. We want it to look nice. We want, you know, do as best you can. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is not going into better homes and gardens here. We're just trying to make a practical... Uh, item for your radio, but make it look good. There's no use in doing all this, spend this kind of money and, you know, half-assing it, right? 
Okay, so we want it to look nice. Take the whole thing back to the drill press. So now in step six, using one of the aluminum strips as a guide, which is the one you taped up on the top of the PVC board, you're going to drill all of your holes into both pieces of PVC in one sh and, you know, as you go along. So for this step, because I didn't, the step bit's not going to work really well. You're not going to be able to center it up perfectly, and you want these to be perfectly, perfectly centered holes. I actually switched over to a 5 8 Forstner bit, which you see in the right side here. And I was able to just ease that right down to the hole, flip on my drill press, and go right through the PVC board into the bottom. So uh, one other thing to think about, when you're going through this kind of, when you're going through the PVC board, have a sacrificial piece of wood, some scrap piece of junk, whatever you got down below, and put it right below that PVC board. So as you're going through and putting that pressure down, when, it, when the drill bit makes it through the other side, you don't blow out the other end. It'd be better to just have it go into another piece of scrap wood. So like I said, get all of your pieces cut, or all your pieces drilled, and you should be good to go from here. So with that being done, guys, we're going to switch over to video and go into the assembly of everything, and I'll see you guys over there. So now comes the fun part. We're going to start doing the assembly. So for the assembly, we're going to need a couple different tools. So I'm going to show you right here. You're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. I'm using a 3 8 drive with a 3 quarter inch deep socket. You'll see why in a minute. I'm also using a 3 8 uh, a quarter inch drive, 3 8 socket, deep socket. You're going to need two SO239 connectors. I bought the 3 inch long ones because I couldn't find anything in, anything short. It'd be too, it'd be, it'd be in too short. Um, I chose to use 10 by 24 uh, all thread because I had some lying around for one of the other projects we're working on for you guys. So I'll be using that for my ground. You'll also need number 10 washers, number 10 by 24 wing nuts, number 10 lock washers, number 10 by 24 two and a half inch screws that come with nuts, and I just bought some extra nuts in case. Um, also we have here is expandable weather seal foam that we'll put around the edges of the piece when we're done. Now you saw in the previous videos that I had all this stuff taped together. I'd had this piece on here used as a guide so I can make sure all of my holes are exactly where they're supposed to be on this piece. So now we've got all of our pieces cut, our two pieces of aluminum, and our, two, and our two pieces of PVC. So now we will go through and get rid of this tape to separate these items. So if you no longer need those. And that will make, hopefully make assembly a little bit easier. Or it'll make it a nightmare, depending on how you look at it. Like I said, if you got basic tools, I didn't use anything special here. You know, I had a, I've got a drill press. You could do it with a hand drill. Um, you know, the saw blades really had no problem cutting through this aluminum. It's only eighth inch aluminum, so the carbide tip saw blades went through it like butter. Uh, just to, for because I'm a little OCD on uh, the way things look, I did use my square. I grabbed my square here, and I marked out the exact center point of this, and made a mark all the way down, and also made it, found the center point this way. So when I was getting ready to uh, line this up, I make sure it was almost completely perfect. So the way we're going to assemble this now is we're going to take our top plate. And we're going to take our first set of screws, get these opened up. And again, I went with two and a half inch because that's pretty much all they had. Uh, again, guys, links to all this stuff will be down in the description. But I, I picked up pretty much everything at Lowe's. Okay, so I want to have my washers. And some really sharp scissors one of these days. They're actually, better. okay. Just want to make sure we have all of our items out that we want. So we're good. So what I want to do, I want to assemble this by driving these screws in. There we go. Get those all 
lined up. They might be a little bit tough getting in there, but they will go. We put on our back plate. This one needs a little bit of. There we go. And the rest of these ought to just push right through. All right. So we got the first section of that done. Make sure we got our holes lined up where they're supposed to be. We'll now take our all thread, which will be our ground. We'll get this into, oh, now I'm dropping screws out. Probably should have screwed that together first. That will go in this way. Might be a little bit easier. Looks like maybe something had shifted a little bit on me here. Oh, you know what? Maybe this is all right. That might be what it is. I'm sorry. I got to back this out real quick. I know exactly what happened. One of these plates is on because it's not. I mean, I, I guarantee it wasn't a uh, perfect match, but I think if I put it on like that and go back through. I got a sneaking suspicion that this is going to work out just fine. Yeah, that seems to be doing a lot better. So, yeah, I, had, I was off my measurements. This, you know, this wasn't done in a machine shop. This is done in my garage. So now everything's in here. It's all ready to go. So the first thing I want to do, I want to take a washer on both sides of the grounding area. Put one in the front, one in the back. And we're going to grab our wing nuts. I don't know why they give you only three in a package. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you think you should have four of those in a package? Uh, okay, I, need, oh, I forgot one more thing here. Because I'm doing this a little bit differently. I want this to... Uh, I'm kind of doing this on the fly, guys. I'm just kind of going by my sweet, seat of my pants here to figure out how to get this done. But I think I really want... those in there like that. Same on this side. And that all thread, I just cut that with a uh, metal saw. A little bit of elbow grease. Okay, so for these pieces, I do want a washer on each one. This side, washer there, washer there. Put a lock washer on each one of these. This should go fairly quickly. There's not, not rocket science here. Okay. Let's get the... Get those put on. You know, any chance I get to make something, A, to me seems like a little bit of a challenge, so it's kind of fun for me. And uh, B, if it saves me some money, why not? All right, so we're going to tighten these up now. Just want them nice and snug. You're not gonna crush this PVC, I mean, this stuff's pretty, pretty tough. I'll make sure we got a really good seal on everything. that's on there. Grab our wing nut for our ground on this side. I 
and we'll do the same to this side. Okay, that part is in there. Next, we'll take our SO 239s, take out one side, slide that through. That is not cooperating with me. I'll try to go the other direction. There we go. All right. Get that nice and tight in there. Drop our nut on this side. That's actually gonna work out pretty well, I think. I think that's gonna work just fine. Same for this side. Get that nut on there. Now just for good measure. Tighten these down. Not trying to strangle the damn thing. But I do want them snug and I do want them secure. There. That is basically it, guys. We have made, successfully made, a window pass-through that, you know, probably would have cost between $80 and $100 if you bought it online. And it would not have come with PVC, which is rot-proof and everything else-proof. So this thing here, I think, is going to work. The only thing left to do now is to, of course, attach these two pieces. So I'll put in two screws here and two screws over here facing inward so the outside view of this will be nice and clean. You only see the screws on the inside. And we grab our weather seal. We'll seal all the way around this thing and stick it in the window. So we'll get to that part next. So stay tuned and I'll see you shortly. All right guys, so since we talked last, I had to order a couple extra parts, um, stuff that I realized I needed and it's kind of dumb on my part, so I apologize. But as you see in the, la in the last video, we created our pass-through. Well, what I added to it was two patch cables to go from the inside into the radio. And I also bought, in case I'm not using the uh, HF radio or the VHF, the VHF can be, is going to be attached, mo or the VHF over here is going to be attached most of the time. The HF will be taken up and down as I need it. But to keep it protected, keep that keep that uh, that uh, connection protected. I bought this little set on Amazon, and all the links for everything here, guys, will be down below. I bought this little set of covers that screw on. You see right down here. Bring the camera down, please. These little covers here will will just screw right onto your settings, and keep those supposedly waterproof. I would probably wrap these in some kind of coax tape just to make sure, or, or, or electrical tape at the very least, just to make sure everything's ready to roll. But at this point, the only other thing I've done, because my windows are set up the way they are, I went out to my table saw and I set it up a little over three eighths of an inch and I cut a groove right down the center on each side, exactly seven eighths of an inch to, ac uh, to accommodate for the groove in the window. So that should now, and I've already kind of pre-tested it, this should now fit into uh, the window the way we want it to go. So the next step is going to be adding in the foam. So we'll grab our scissors here and cut this foam open. I don't think that opening foam requires uh, much of a uh, instruction manual here. Okay, so... 
just have to peel that off. And this is a double stick uh, foam that I bought at Home Depot, or maybe I got it at Lowe's. I, I can't, I can't re really remember. Uh, one of the two places I got it, and it expands out to uh, up to f one inch thick. And I got that because I want to be able to have the foam. I want the foam when 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 the, when the window sandwiches down on top of this. I want there to be cushioning so it'll block out all the air all the way around this item. So hopefully this foam is going to be the solution to that, and hopefully I can get the damn thing open. <laughs> it says cut here. Even comes with instructions. We don't even need. We don't need instructions. There we go. So we will lay out some foam. I'll go ahead and cut that right about there. And look, guys, this is a this is a first time thing for me. So we're doing this uh, kind of blind at the moment, but I think this is going to work. This can't be that hard to work with, right? So we get that foam out there. We'll get that attached to our piece nice and tight. I'll go ahead and flip over the other side and I'll use something as a prop to hold it up here. We'll get that cut. You know, depending on how anal you are about not having air leak out, you know, and, and you know, if, if you look at uh, the statistics on what a, a hole or any kind of air air leakage in your house is, uh, you might want to pay attention to that just a little bit and make sure you're minimizing the amount of air that leaks out through this. But I think for the most part, we're going to be okay. So the final piece is here. We'll tip that up. And we will get that as close to the mark. And, uh, you know, one of the other things I did when I cut the PVC out, measure your window and cut the PVC out to the measurement you got. Maybe add a little bit more. You can always take away. If you cut off too much, make it too short, you just pissed away 20 bucks. So I would suggest making it just a little bit longer and then cutting it down as you need it. We went back about four or five times when we were cutting this piece here to make sure that it fit within the parameters of what I wanted it to fit in the window. So keep that in mind and make sure you make your cuts, you know, be, be uh, use a little common sense there with your cuts. All right, so this is going along pretty easily. We'll get our foam out here. You know, this might not be perfect. I might have to go back and Screw that a little bit again later on, but right now I think this is going to work for my purposes. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. You know, the big, the biggest problem we have out here, uh, people overthink things, and you overthink yourself into making a mistake. Just jump in and do it. I mean, the foam didn't cost that much. If I have to tear it off and redo it. I don't really care. But I think we're going to be pretty close to the mark here. We'll get that in there like so. All right. So that is now set up to uh, go in the window, which will be going in right back in here. So I think we're set to go. And the next, uh, next part will be installing this in the window, getting it all hooked up, and we'll give it a test. All right, guys. So we now have our panel, and to save time, I went in and attached the two patch cables that'll be going directly into the radio inside the window here. Uh, we actually started doing this last night, but it was so dark, I decided, oh, well, you know, instead of uh, doing it all in the dark, I have to bring out lights, I'll wait till it's really, really hot today. And it's, uh, it's pretty hot. How hot is it? It is so hot, I saw two hobbits throw a ring into my backyard. Anyway, let's get rolling here. So we're gonna get the window up. Get the other cables out. Get these cables in. And we're going to work this into the door, into the window. And this should be nice and snug. 
without bending everything. Yeah. Just gotta find those grooves that I made last night with this table saw. <clears throat> There we go. And that, my friends, is nice. And then they're nice and solid. And that foam should decompress a little bit. So, my VHF UHF is the one that stays on most of the time. So I'll take the cap off here. We'll just go ahead and get that one attached. Now, I highly suggest that you guys utilize coax wrap. It only sticks to itself. It's not super cheap, but you don't need a whole lot. It'll waterproof your connections for things that are gonna stay out here for a long time. So what I do is I'll cut off a little bit of this you can stretch it, and I'll demonstrate it here in just one second when I get this cut off. Take off the backing on it. And this will stretch around your fittings to keep them nice. You want to overlap about halfway across. just to ensure that you got a nice watertight wrap. And that should work. Now we'll shut the window. I'll go in there and fine tune that here in a minute. But that's basically the installation. The other cable here will go in for the HF antenna. But I, I usually take my, I move my HF antennas around a lot and I use different ones depending on what I'm trying to do on, on the radio. So uh, this one I'm just gonna keep off for right now. But we'll go inside and test this out, make sure this all checks, get a signal check on uh, VHF, UHF, the local repeater, and go from there. I'll see you guys inside. Okay guys, you can see here, we have a perfect seal all the way across. I got the two patch cables in. I went ahead and patched this one into the antenna tuner for my HF. And down here is going to the back of the 991 for my VHF UHF antenna. So we're all set to do a signal check. Pop on the gear here. If you want to take over the camera there for one second. This is KI5 NPL. Can I get a signal check please? I appreciate that. You're coming in pretty loud and clear. Uh, I just want to check. I've just made a new window pass through and uh, just test testing out the signal on this on this new setup. Awesome. I uh, do appreciate the signal check. And he's not going to get back to me. Yeah, sure thing. When you said you had a window pass through, is it like an antenna that's mounted on the glass? Actually, no. What I did is uh, I looked up MFJ has a window pass through you can buy, and it's like a hundred bucks. And I just basically looked at how they built it and went out and got the materials myself. I'm using a PVC board instead of a pine and basically built an, a, the exact same thing for about, I don't know, 30 bucks. Well, no problem. I just want to make sure we had this uh, tested. I'm actually shooting video for the 
YouTube channel right now, so this will hopefully be in the video and uh, let everybody know that our theory here worked and we're all ready to roll. And now he's not going to say anything. Thank you very much. You as well. KI5 MPL clear. All right, guys. So we did it. Uh, the pass through works just fine. Uh, like I said uh, before, all the parts, everything I use right down to the foam, all the links will be down below in the video. Um, you know, I guess that's pretty much it. I appreciate you guys watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. That'll help the YouTube algorithm show my video to more people who are interested in ham radio topics. And, uh, you know, if I've earned it, again, please uh, feel free to subscribe and click on the little bell and be notified when I put out new videos. Until then, guys, this is my name is Scott. My call sign is KI5NPL, and I'm clear.